In quantum mechanics, it's often hard to model everything that we want to understand. The best example of this is taking a wave function. You can't really see the wave function or understand what it looks like, so instead we have to take its probability function, which is taken by normalizing the wave function or taking its absolute value and then squaring it. But this leaves us with a lot of information that we don't end up being able to see. One way we can cope with this or change this is to use Hilbert space. So, very brief, brief explanation. What is Hilbert space? It is a n-dimensional space uh, that we contain probability waves in. But when we want to look at the wave function, there's an interesting explanation for why it's not so simple. It's not just a number, it is a vector. Uh, for instance, with the double slit experiment, um, we can draw out the interference patterns of the, the light waves interacting with each other as they go through the as they pass the two slits, uh, or sorry, after the slits, um, and as they travel towards the screen. But we generally only really work mathematically with the probability function, because um, that's what you can really see from that. And that's that imprint that it makes um, where we have brighter bands and darker bands, and that's the result of these interference patterns, but we don't deal with, like we don't model the wave function itself. So, well, how does that work? So n-dimensional, you can have as many dimensions in this space as you want to. So I like to use an analogy of a playing card. So imagine you have a playing card. Well, there's a few different properties that this playing card has. So what are the properties that this playing card has? Uh, so there's its suit, uh, its color, its position in like a deck of 52 cards, and its value, which is 1 to 14, or ace, 2, 3, 4, up to king. Um, so, knowing this, say we wanted to model this. Uh, we wanted to model a specific playing card, and we're going to use Hilbert space to do that. So we have four properties that this thing has, so we're going to set up a, a vector with four components. Um, suit, color, position, value. And let's say we don't know what its suit is, so suit is going to be X. Uh, we know its color is red, we know its position is 34, and we don't know its value. That's going to be Y. So we can set these up in our vector, and we can look at this in Hilbert space, and then say, this is where Hilbert space gets useful, um, say we want to get the probability of what is that card, what is the probability that that is any given card. Um, well, we can, we can do this to each of, the vec each of the vector components in this. We can take their probabilities. So we can say, well, the suit um, can be one of two because we know it's red. Um, the color, that's known. That's going to be one. So suit is going to be one half. Color is going to be one. Position, we know it's 34, so that's going to be one. The probability is one that it is 34. Um, and its value, y, uh, is going to be 1 out of 14 different possible options, so 1 14th. Um, so from this, now we have a vector model of the probability function. And if we want to, we could take the overall probability function of what this looks like um, and get like out of any card possible, like what could it be, instead of breaking it down into these, these specific things. So take out all the red cards. Um, and position doesn't really give us much as to what the card is itself. Um, but yeah, this is, this is a way we can model things. Um, um, but again, same question. Why, why is this the probability function? Why is the probability function, the wave function, take its absolute value, square it? Why, what is that correlation there? How is the probability a number when the the wave is not a number, it's a, it's a vector. So, there's an interesting, interesting explanation for this. So there's something called an inner product, and an inner product is a way of taking two vectors, and you perform this operation on them, and you get a scalar out as the result. Now, if you take a wave function, which is a vector, and you take the inner product of the wave function and itself, that is the equivalent of taking the wave function, taking, taking its absolute value, and squaring it. 
And so what we do is we, we take this inner product and we get a number. We're taking two vectors and we're turning them into a scalar. We're taking this, so by, by taking the absolute value and squaring it, it's a simple way of taking the inner product of a number and itself. Um, another thing we can do with this is we can get its entropy, uh, its informational entropy. So informational entropy is how much you don't know about a value in a system or about a system. Um, so in this case, we can calculate this from this equation and we can apply this equation to each of the vector components, each of the components in the vector. Um, and by doing this, we're creating a number that represents how much we don't know. It's a measurement of how much we don't know about this card. Um, and it's inverse to the probability. Now I'm using playing cards as this example because they're pr pretty familiar and um, easy to work with. Uh, easy to imagine, but playing cards could be anything. They could be qubits, they could be um, electrons in an atom, they could be a variety of things. So uh, yeah, you can really substitute anything into this and you can adjust Hilbert space uh, accordingly. So Hilbert space can have as many dimensions as you need. If something has 14 different properties that define it, Hilbert space can have 14 dimensions for you. Um, you can you can do whatever you like with it, which is really nice and makes it a really useful tool in quantum mechanics. Now, when we talk about Hilbert space, it's easy to automatically think about Euclidean space or Minkowski space that we that we experience and think that it must exist somewhere. That's not really the case. It's no longer, it, it doesn't exist any more than anything else exists. It's just a way of mathematically representing something that is very hard to see um, in other mathematical ways. Uh, so again, it's a, it's a linear vector space. Um, uh, some key equations to think about when, when looking at all of this is, of course, we have to remember wave function, uh, probability, density, um, probability on a line, uh, normalization function and information entropy, which we'll talk about a little bit. So we, when we're mathematically representing Hilbert space, uh, it follows a few rules. Um, so Hilbert space follows all of the rules that a vector space does, um, but it also follows a few more that is specific to it. Um, so the inner product must be conjugate symmetrical. So what does this mean? So an in the inner product is an operation where you take two vectors and you get a scalar in return. And what this says is if you, I have a vector A and a vector B and I take their inner product, I get a number. Now if I do the inner product of vector B and vector A, I should get the same number. Uh, so AB must equal BA. That's all it needs. Uh, vectors in Hilbert space also must be linear with respect to the second vector but not linear with respect to the first vector. Another rule of Hilbert space that makes a lot of sense in the terms of quantum mechanics is that um, the uh, inner product of a vector and itself must be equal to uh, that vector uh, absolute value and squared, and that value, both of these values on either side of this, must be greater than zero. Um, and the reason being, you can't have a probability that's zero in this, in this space, that things must have probabilities. That would be invalid to have no probability. Uh, there's another rule pertaining to distances in Hilbert space, um, as we can see. And uh, the final rule of Hilbert spaces is that uh, all of the dimensions in the space must be separable which in very simple terms uh, means you can form subsets within them.